डियर मेंबर्स ऑफ द पेज एंड एवरी वन प्रेजेंट ऑन फेसबुक आई एक्सटेंड यू गाइज अ वॉम वेलकम एंड आई वेरी मच होपफुल दै यू गाइज विल बी डूइंग एब्सोल्युटली वेल एंड यू विल बी डूइंग फाइन एंड टुडे आफ got to discuss uh, something totally uh, you know uh, different from what we have been discussing in our you know uh, previous sessions now my today's lecture is going to be uh, about solving css past paper of like composition sentence correction of 2000 so i'm i'm going to solve that sentence correction and then i'll be giving you some idioms and i'll try my best to use those idioms in in context so that you guys can get uh you know some how we know of how to use those idioms um so uh, with your kind permission and with your grace and uh, you know uh benevolence i would like to move to the lecture so as to entertain you guys or to disseminate among you guys um you know the the essential knowledge of uh english language because english language uh is is a language that is desired by almost every one of us and now you know if if i am to talk in 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 a literal sense or in a literal manner english language is increasingly becoming a mistress of everyone i mean everyone is um trying to uh, you know get acclimatized or get familiar to this language and 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 people are trying to familiarize themselves with the accurate use of english language because i can tell you one thing um uh, dear members that if you are acquainted with english language if you know english language well and if you are at home in it i mean if you can use it proficiently it guarantees a promising career it makes you you know um uh, versatile i mean uh, it adds a lot to your personality it grooms your personality so this language is really i mean instrumental in making you uh, you know translate your dreams into reality so if you guys are willing to improve yourselves in letter and spirit if you want to uh, you know learn things that you could not you know imagine earlier or before now now I, i'm trying my level best though my contribution is insignificant i am still uh, you know uh, a neophyte i am a learner and uh, i uh, i i believe that my linguistic skills are still in its infancy i'm not you know someone in a position of aristotelian genius i you know never claim to have any sort of adroitness pretty much you know wet behind my ears but i'm still trying very hard to augment myself to improve my skills and not only that i'm also you know uh, making efforts to share my knowledge with you language enthusiast like you know there'll be so many people who want to enlighten themselves with this wonderful lectures and i just you know uh want to make a very humble request from all of you those who are the member of this page that please share my lectures with your kith and kin with your relatives with your friends so that they can be of great meaning and great significance to them they might be aspiring to uh improve their linguistic skills their language skills so this is a very humble request to all of you to share your feedback with me i mean if you have some feedback um which which could you know uh, help me in improving my lectures more 
uh, you know, in adding uh, life into my lecture, you know, more like more than they, they already are, I would very much welcome that, that, that feedback with, you know, uh, with, with a great warmth. So I, I, I'm really looking forward to that. Please share each lecture that I share on this page and also share the page with your friends. Because this page is going to be, you know, uh, very much crucial in, in, in making you guys improve, ameliorate and enhance your linguistic skills. Now, with your kind grace and permission, I would like to move to the lecture. So to let you guys enjoy what the lect lecture of today is going to be about. So um, I'm going to solve or I'm going to correct the sentences that were given in 2000 CSS English composition paper. The leg freezed rapidly. Now this is the very first sentence. We, we, we don't have the past participle form of freeze as freezed. So the sentence would be, the, the mistake is here in the word freezed. Now if I am to correct it, I will simply say the leg froze rapidly now the sentence has been corrected so the mistake was in the word in the form of the word uh, the verb given above and i just altered it and automatically the sentence is now fine and then the, the farm was unwilling to forgo its usual commission now here the word is unwilling now that's where the mistake lies i've simply made it in this way the farm was disinclined to forgo its usual commission. So disinclined is a word which has been incorporated here in place of unwilling and it has melt it has made all the difference. It has resulted in, in the sentence being grammatically fine and correct. He watched the lambs gamble on the green. Now here, again, the mistake is in the word gamble. Obviously, we don't use gamble word. It has entirely different denotation and entirely different meaning. So mistake is in the word gamble. If I am to correct it, I have to alter it. I have to change the word and incorporate a suitable and appropriate word here, which is gamble gamble now gamble means when when the ship are frolicking in a playful manner they are playing around playfully you know on a green um, farm or an, somewhere you know where, where there is grass you you'll find them gambling in playfully in a playful manner all right and then it was he belong he belongs sorry I, I forgot to put here uh, he belonged to he belonged to with belong we always use the preposition to that's like a fixed preposition so he belonged to the guild of carpenters now mistake is here g-i-l-d the correct word would be g-u-i-l-d guild of carpenters All right. and then it was like he had he had not ought to have spoken he had not ought to have spoken again here is a grammatical error here is a grammatical mistake so it can be rectified or corrected in this manner he ought not to have spoken he ought not to have spoken and the sentence is correct all right and then is this his half brother now this was a sentence so the problem is in the half brother half brother doesn't make any sense is he he's now we, we would be removing this and replacing it with he is he his step brother so instead of half brother we will be using step brother and the sentence would be all right hey watch out for the car now you are cautioning someone you're trying to make someone aware you know for the car for the car you know coming towards him so you would simply say hey watch out the car hey watch out the car no preposition here right this is a historical spot uh, yeah, this is the historical spot where he was shot dead. Now, here the problem is in historical. We would say this is the historic spot. Now, what is the difference between historical and historic? Historical is normally, it refers to history, a historical building and something like that. But historic means momentous, like, you know, memorable, something 
something might have happened which resulted in making that date or that place momentous, like very significant uh, occurrence or uh, event. So that's the difference. So the, the real word over here would be historic. And then we bought a Japanese print. So it would be a Japanese print. The origin um, form, like we would use Japanese. That's, you know, the correction made here. Fresh flowers smell sweetly. Now we would not say sweetly because it's, it's not a correct form. We would simply say fresh flowers smell sweet. That's how the sentence has been corrected. I hope you guys are in full swing and enjoying the lecture. All right, now we're moving towards some idioms that will answer the part of uh, the, the examination in 2000, the Central Superior Exam, CSS Exams 2000. I'm going to read out the idioms and I'll be trying to shed light on the meaning and, you know, tell you how to use them in, in sentences. Blow one stop. Now, this means to lose one one's temper to be you know to become very angry or very furious right um a, a cock and bull story a cock and bull story is a story that's ridiculous that's false that's pretentious that's not something to be relied on or to be you know to be trusted so that's how you can use it i mean uh, I have made a sentence here. He gave me s s uh, some cock and bull story about having to be at his cousin's engagement party. So he was making his cock and bull story. I mean, whatever he was saying, that was nothing but a mere cock and bull story. And therefore, I did not trust that. I did not rely on him. All right. And then we have finds one feet. Now, finds one feet means to reach to a position where you feel comfortable. For instance, I can say that I've been making, uh, you know, great efforts in my career, but thank God, finally, I have found my feet. Now, I'm a, now I am in a most stable position. Like, I'm feeling quite at home now. That's what uh, the usage of this idiom is. All right. Carly tonight. Now, Carly tonight means, for instance, like now I'm recording this lecture, and I say, hey, folk, hey, my Facebook fraternity, let's call it a night. Let's finish now. You're doing something at night, and you say, oh, it's, it's okay, it's enough. We should call it a night. We should take a leave now. We should finish it now. All right. The tip of the iceberg. Now, the tip of the iceberg means a small noticeable of, of the problem. Like, you know, there is a problem, and a small amount of that problem is easily noticeable. It can be noticed. But, you know, to that very problem, there is, a, in, there is something greater than what is being noticed. Like, you see a problem which is, you know, small, but I tell you that this is not the only problem. There is greater to it. There is more to than what, what is, you know, uh, meeting the eyes. Like I've seen here, um, the small local protests are just the tip of the iceberg. Or if I say corruption in this department is just the tip of the iceberg. Now this means that in this country, corruption is rampant. Corruption in this department is nothing. But if you see it in the country, that's truly flabbergasting. I mean, that will make you gobsmacked. That will surprise you and you'll be absolutely astounded. All right. So from below par, below par means, uh, you know, below the required standard. If I say, you, you know, you, your efforts are below par, that means your efforts are not you know what is required of you or you're not making efforts what is required of you that's where you can say and then we have um from pillar to post now from pillar to post means you, uh, you are moving from one place to another you're always on the move you can say that my parents were always on the move and all my childhood was uh you know spent being dragged from pillar to post like my parents would move from one place to another and that's how you know um i never settled anywhere for you know a longer period of time or always move from pillar to post that's how you can use it all right and then we have hang up hang up means you know um you do some if somebody calls you and maybe they shout or you don't like talking to them you simply hang up the call you disconnect the call or you just you know uh 
yeah, obviously you disconnect the call. So that that would its meaning would be. Um, and then we have buy and buy. Now buy and buy means slowly. It's like a gradual process. So you can say that a lot of people started appearing buy and buy. Like gradually, a lot of people appeared. No, all at once, but gradually, a lot of people appeared. So that's how buy and buy is referred to. You can also say that I am getting used to writing buy and buy. Now that would mean I'm getting used to writing slowly, gradually. I'm improving my writing. Thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoy the lecture. But wait, 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 wait. See, do one thing. Do not forget to share it because sharing is caring. I want you guys to share it because the more you share it, the more lectures I would be offering you here on this page, on this platform. God bless you all.